Mr. Mac Brewish, please. Great. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, the presentation today really focuses on uh, what we think is a very key use case for telco NFV. And by extension, uh, it is important to have a robust OpenStack implementation as the virtual infrastructure manager to enable this application. Um, I mean, we think about where NFV is today, and really over the last two, three years, we've seen a lot of testing of virtualization in a lab. We've seen a lot of proof of concepts, but we haven't seen a lot of operationalization. We haven't seen a lot of commercial implementations. So what we're going to discuss today is how to get from the lab environment to a commercially ready NFE solution, and in particular around virtualized customer premises equipment. So if you look at what the research is telling us, uh, it is saying that Virtualized CPE is a top use case in NFE for the service provider community. And I think this makes actually a lot of sense, right? If you think about the top tier operators today, their main challenge, of course, is driving revenue growth. And as a result of that, they take a look at all of the different markets they serve and they wonder how they can reduce their cost of sales, how they can reduce the risk associated with bringing new services to market to generate higher revenue growth. And virtualized CPE kind of lies at the heart of the answer. Right? Because if you think about, for example, the small and medium-sized business market, Small and medium-sized businesses have largely been neglected by the largest operators in the world, right? Because the cost of sales to generate revenue from the small and medium-sized business is so high, right? So a lot of our top-tier operator customers really focus in on generating revenue from uh, the enterprise market, the very largest businesses, right? And as a result, the small and medium-sized business market, I think, and the middle market, the medium-sized business market, has largely been neglected with you know, advanced features such as uh, IT-based services and applications, managed services, um, you know, various kinds of uh, enhanced connectivity models. Uh, they have not had as many of those kinds of services delivered to them, right? And what virtualized CPE does is help address that need by reducing the cost of sales for the service provider, and it opens up a much broader market you know, for them to a very large segment of their customer base. Okay? So that's just a little bit of color commentary around what we think is driving the need for uh, virtualized CPE. And it's not just in the business market. We're gonna talk today about how VCPE is you know, driving growth in the residential market as well. So virtualized CPE enables many new business models. So I would argue that you know, VCPE is not just about reducing capital costs. I think service providers know how to uh, apply pressure to vendors to reduce their overall cost of equipment. And I, I would argue that NFE is not so much about reducing the cost of infrastructure as it is streamlining operations and creating an environment to drive revenue growth through new and compelling applications that are delivered from the cloud. Okay. So one of those use cases uh, is Cloud VPN. We actually just had a press release with Telefonica on Cloud VPN. Um, it is a very promising use case. And what it enables an enterprise to do, what it enables a business customer to do, is log in through a self-service portal and change service parameters in real time uh, 
connectivity. You can bring up connectivity on a particular site, a remote site or a branch office or a headquarters site. You can change the attributes of that connectivity. You can change the SLAs. You can apply different uh, you know, policies and filters to the traffic itself. You can enhance the connectivity. But even more important is the ability to use that self-service portal to enable new applications. So if we have, for example, network functions like session border control, firewall, intrusion detection, all different kinds of security functions, um, application acceleration, WAN optimization, to be able to turn those on in real time you know, creates a revenue stream for our customers. I think this is also behind what's driving the uh, demand for particular use cases in VCPE like cloud VPN. On the residential side, we see parental control and policy management being very important. Uh, we see per device and per user based policies uh, that are enabled through VCPE. Okay. You know, by taking the configuration away from the device at the premises and moving it into the cloud, simplifying the connectivity to the end user, and enabling much more robust uh, policy-based personalization in the cloud, you know, we have the ability, for example, to have very granular and personalized services to the end user. So for example, you might have a parental control service where a child's device is trying to access a certain kind of website or a certain kind of content. The virtualized border uh, broadband network gateway uh, instantiates that connectivity, brings that traffic directly to a parental control server you know, where a policy is applied and for uh, in a particular period of time that child cannot get access to a kind of uh, content or website. Uh, and if it's a shared device, if it's not just one child's device, if it's a shared device, you know, then the broadband network gateway can direct that traffic directly to a web authentication portal. Right, where the user has to authenticate him or herself. Right, so we have this ability to use self-service portals, self, a much more robust self-service capability to give end users the ability to uh, personalize services in real time. Smart home and smart office is another really key application. We've done a number of proof of concepts in this area and we're working with partners, for example, like Intel to uh, bring an Internet of Things gateway into the VCPE environment. You know, so we have the ability you know, to aggregate traffic, simplify management, and optimize the resources of an Internet of Things gateway in a VCPE environment. So now, you know, a service provider, for example, could start to offer a smart home service where sensors and uh, different devices within the home are connected and managed all through, you know, a single pane of glass, a single uh, portal. Um, so another very promising revenue opportunity. Uh, and then for enhanced troubleshooting, um, you know, if you have all of this data coming in through the cloud, I mean, one of the things that I think is fundamental about NFV for the service provider market is that, you know, if it's delivered right, if it's optimized correctly or engineered correctly, you have an embedded analytics function with the VCPE platform. So, and that analytics, you know, can provide customers with certain trending and certain uh, historical data, uh, analysis of particular trends, of you know, maybe what's happening in the network that's gone wrong or what's um, you know, causing customers to shift from one service to another or maybe to end their terms. And you know, a lot of that kinds of data, a lot of that troubleshooting data can be used you know, to um, reduce churn you know, and to anticipate uh, certain trends among the customer base. And then finally, I would say um, another key application in VCPE is the transition from IPv4 to IPv6. You know, a lot of the C CPE that's installed today is not IPv6 ready, uh, but it need not be ready if we have the ability, for example, to introduce IPv6 in the cloud, right? So, um, you know, we have the ability to have a uh, carrier grade uh, DHCP function in the cloud as part of the VCPE uh, schematic 
and you know, we have the ability to deliver uh, an IPv6 service or transition from IPv4 to IPv6. You know, so all of these, these are just you know, five use cases. There are many more, but these five use cases, I think, are indicative of you know, the promise of VCPE. And I should actually just back up and let you know that if we look at our pipeline today, we've done more than 40 POCs in the service provider market. You know, an overwhelming majority of the interest that we have right now is in the VCPE application. Um, we do have, of course, a uh, number of different trials in virtualized evolved packet core. You know, our colleague from Docomo uh, just talked about our participation in their trials that are happening right now. Uh, but, you know, overall, it's really the uh, VCPE that's driving a lot of the interest among service providers today. So, if there's so much interest and there's so much promise, why is commercialization held up? I mean, if you actually look at where the, uh, where the trials have been and where the deployments have been, there's a big gap, right? There have been a tremendous number of POCs, but there have not been a large number of real commercial deployments. And those commercial deployments that have happened have been subscale, I would argue, you know, in particular domains or in particular areas of the network. So, why is that? So I would put to you there are a few different reasons. First of all, the overall business case has not really been proven. Right? I think we've spent a lot of time uh, with CIOs and CTOs proving technological concepts and we haven't spent nearly as much time with uh, the CMO, the chief marketing officer. We haven't spent nearly enough time with the chief financial officer to prove out the business case. Right? And you know, that business case is m about much more, as I said earlier, than uh, just reducing CapEx. You know, if you actually look at a service provider's cost structure, you, know, you compare CapEx to OpEx, uh, you know, it's, if you're moving the needle in CapEx, you're not exactly proving the overall business case. You have to reduce the cost of operations and you have to increase the top line. And I think that's where a lot of the business case uh, that have been uh, presented to the CFO have essentially fallen down so far. There's also a lot of confusion about orchestration. So um, if you think about this term orchestration, you know, a lot of people think about OpenStack as an orchestration product, right? Uh, but in the way of NFE, in terms of NFE, OpenStack doesn't do all of the orchestration that's needed. Of course, it does orchestration of resources in the cloud in the data center. Uh, but we have, according to the Etsy framework, you know, we have the NFE orchestration. And even on top of NFE orchestration, which is really just resource orchestration from uh, you know, an element or network management type capacity into the infrastructure layer, what we really need is a horizontal uh, service orchestration layer that cuts across physical and virtual network boundaries. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. But there's a lot of confusion about orchestration and you know, just how much uh, service providers need to invest in it and to what extent it should be open source and uh, you know, what's practical with respect to uh, you know, open source approaches or not. I would also say that another challenge is OSS and BSS readiness. So if we're going to actually commercialize something, we need to bill for those services, we need to assure those services, and a lot of the existing rating and charging and assurance and uh, policy management is not yet real time in nature. It's not yet ready to function in an automated way for an NFE based service. So you know, there's a lot of evolution that needs to happen in the billing environment and the operational environment, apart from just that service orchestration layer, that uh, is absolutely essential to be making NFE a commercial reality and therefore, you know, driving some of the use of OpenStack, right, for NFE. And then finally, um, another great challenge is the integration to brownfield environments. Um, a lot of what we've seen so far in terms of commercial deployments have really been in uh, you know, greenfield environments, um, you know, in, in patches of networks that are not as necessarily encumbered by 
uh, by legacy infrastructure, by existing physical infrastructure. So what we know, though, about service providers is that they're going to operate virtual networks alongside physical networks for at least the next 15, 20 years. You think about circuit to packet and that migration. I mean, that took place over 15, 20, even 25 years. We still have circuit networks out there today. Of course, all of the traffic is packet. Most of the infrastructure is now packet optimized. However, we still have some circuit-based switching. So that was one architectural shift. Now we're moving to another architectural shift with respect to physical to virtual. And I think what we know is that we're going to operate in a hybrid environment. And what that means is that services are going to need to be provisioned and assured across multiple types of domains. And that's difficult, right? It's far more difficult, far more challenging than turning up a virtual service in a greenfield environment. So this is why commercialization, in our estimation, remains elusive. So what do we need to do? I mean, broadly speaking, we think the answer is, you know, in this term called cloudification or bringing these functions and services, you know, from a focus on virtualization to a focus on the cloud. So as I said in the very beginning, we know how to virtualize functions. We know how to take an appliance and virtualize it on an X.86 or virtualize it on a general purpose piece of hardware, right? That's kind of the easy part. If I would, we spent the last three years kind of proving out virtualization in a lab. What we need to do now is orchestrate those functions, tie an orchestrated function together with the existing OSS so that we can provision services across physical and virtual boundaries. Uh, we need a much more robust self-service capability that incorporates third-party virtual network functions, that incorporates a far wider range of service granularity. And we need, of course, a much more capable partner management function. If you think about what the promise of open networking brings, it is that we can bring together a large ecosystem of third-party vendors in an open environment to create compelling new services. And if we do that, then we need to have a way of figuring out how the money flows, right? We need a way of taking what's happening in the legal department and enforcing that in the network environment, right? We need partner management. We need multi-party settlement that takes care of these contractual arrangements and takes care of service level agreements among partners. So for example, a VNF partner to an orchestration vendor. We need that to happen in real time and we need it to scale, right? We need it to scale in a fundamentally new way. I mean, in the virtualized world, we're going to have a far larger ecosystem of third-party vendors at play. Um, so it begs the requirement of having a much more robust partner management functionality. So that's really what it cloudifying means. That's really what, to us, making NFE cloud-ready is all about. It's bringing those kinds of functions, orchestration, uh, evolved OSS and BSS and partner management and self-service together to bring new services to market to automate the operations behind it. So the cloud-ready VCPE solution has the attributes that I just mentioned and quite a few more. <clears throat> First of all, I think we do need to embrace this concept of DevOps. Right? We need an easy service design and modification capability with an intuitive modeling environment. Right? We don't have that today. Right? We have a highly manual and workflow-based, waterfall-based types of development behind service creation. And that fundamentally needs to change if we're going to move faster. We need multi-channel self-service. Today, you know, most self-service is available through a PC. We need to change that whole dynamic from uh, you know, static connections to mobile connections and more dynamic connectivity and, con and different types of devices. 
We need end-to-end -end VNF onboarding. Think about uh, onboarding. This is a critical functionality. Uh, we need service descriptors, uh, different kinds of catalogs unified together so that we can onboard functions with the kinds of rating and charging and the kinds of uh, service lifecycle management that is going to result in more compelling offers for our customers. And that embedded analytics functionality that I talked about earlier. You know, one of the things that we need in order to cloudify VCPE, in order to automate the functions that we're delivering to customers is a closed loop among service fulfillment and assurance. And service fulfillment and assurance has to be policy-based and analytics-driven. What I mean is, is that we can, should be able to take our real-time monitoring, run analytics on that data that we see in real time, have that feed into a policy engine that guides the orchestration process, right? So that we can make changes to our customer's services in real time, we can optimize the customer experience. We can't do that if we don't have real-time visibility into the network. We can't do that if we don't have real-time visibility into customer preferences and how those customer preferences ought to change given different changes in the network and what they're paying for and what they require under certain conditions. Um, so, you know, closing that loop between service fulfillment and assurance really does take an embedded analytics capability and policy management incorporated into orchestration end to end. And then SDN-based service chaining. What we need there, of course, is you know, dynamic creation of internal communications between servers, VMs, and VNF elements, right? So service chaining is fundamental to creating new and compelling offers. So for example, for the, for the uh, SMB market that I was talking about before, and we need to be able to direct the customer's traffic to whatever applications they're paying for, be it security, WAN optimization, application acceleration, intrusion detection, whatever it might be. And that only happens with SDN control working in coordination with an overall uh, orchestration capability. Right? So VCPE, of course, is about virtualizing the customer premises equipment, but in order to operationalize it, in order to make it commercial, you know, these are the things that we also need behind the scenes. So operationalization to us requires expertise across many domains. Um, I think a lot of the attention in the industry, a lot of the conversation has really been at the CTO level around this green area right here. I don't know if, if I'm working this correctly, but that green box, the smaller green box, that's the NFVO, that's the NFV orchestration function, right? But orchestration in and of itself is really just an automated way or a real-time way to configure and control uh, infrastructure resources. What we really need to operationalize is in that purple column, you know, the embedded analytics and policy management, and in the orange section, you know, all of the OSS and BSS functions that aren't normally thought of in orchestration, but are absolutely essential to operationalizing VCPE. These are things like real-time rating and charging and the partner management functionality that I just discussed. And there's more. There's more. But um, just focusing on those for uh, the interest of time. But the point really is, is that operationalization is much more than, for example, um, you know, the re that resource orchestration layer. You know, at NEC and Netcracker, we've put together an end-to-end -end virtualized CPE solution that incorporates not just the VNFs, uh, the virtualized broadband network gateway and the CG NAT and DHCP functions and AAA and all of those things that you need just to, you know, create connections and to deliver services, but 
you know, all of the higher layer operational capabilities that we've been discussing, service and NFE orchestration, and the evolved OSS and BSS. So I'll just kind of wrap up with a couple of different use cases that we have implemented at NEC and Netcracker that kind of embody what I've been discussing today about what it takes to operationalize. So in this particular use case, uh, this is with a large tier one operator in Europe. This is a residential VCPE application where what they wanted to do was enable these value added services on top of the VCPE infrastructure. So in that, in that cloud up and to the left, you see things like home security, parental control, multimedia storage, and IPTV using multicast DLNA. I mean, these are services that are all available through a customer self-service portal now. And we designed a self-service portal for our customer to enable their end users to self-select these functions in real time and to configure per device and per user uh, policies, right? And at the same time, you know, they have maybe four or five different CPEs that, you know, are certified in their network, and at least one of them um, is going to need to support an IPv6 migration, right? So as I was saying before, you know, we have the ability with uh, DHCP and our carrier grade NAT product to move uh, traffic or migrate traffic from the IPv4 to the IPv6 uh, IP backbone. Um, so this particular CPE uh, POC is uh, complete, it was highly successful. Um, I think, you know, the next step for this customer is pre-production trial. Right? And that's scheduled to take place really over the next you know, three to six months. We also did a cloud VPN solution with a large tier one operator in North America. And the idea here was that we needed to very rapidly onboard third party network functions you know, from you know, the large uh, router vendors like Cisco and Juniper that were providing virtual routers uh, virtual firewalls, and a variety of different functions embedded in the provider edge, right? And the idea was, you know, to take a lot of those embedded functions, move them into a cloud environment, simplify and cost reduce the provider edge, and just optimize it for IP routing, as opposed to, you know, service specific or application specific line cards that frankly, not only cost a lot of money, but take up a lot of space in those chassis for, um, you know, for, 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 that are really best optimized for router ports. Uh, and move those functions into a cloud, create, you know, this cloud marketplace concept for them. The idea is to create a cloud marketplace concept where virtual network functions coexist along with uh, software as a service and other, um, uh, other uh, cloud-based applications that can be offered up and delivered with network functions uh, to help our customers generate more revenue from a cloud VPN service. Yeah, so this way, of course, the operator doesn't need to manually configure every CPE device, um, you know, with statically provisioned parameters, right? Uh, everything can be done, or much more can be done through customer self-service so that the customer themselves can not only control costs, but make sure that each location needs the uh, functions and the um, capabilities required for their VPN service. Um, so uh, the customer um, you know, really wanted to focus on you know, ordered activation for uh, private cloud offerings, um, you know, establishing and enhancing the IP VPN connectivity, you know, giving the end user the ability to change uh, connectivity parameters and QoS parameters um, you know, quickly and easily and uh, incorporating SDN control 
you know, to enable service chaining, uh, which of course is a requirement if, you know, some of those customers out there for some sites are going to enable multiple uh, functions that need to be chained together. So that's the presentation. I'll just leave you with a few key takeaways. I think, you know, we think about, you know, this is a massive conference and OpenStack has so much diversity and um, it applies to so much in the, in, the, in, in the cloud environment and, you know, telco NFV is just one of those areas where OpenStack applies. But, you know, there is a big question of whether or not, you know, NFV will become operationalized and commercialized anytime soon. And, you know, in my estimation, it might take a couple more years to really get to where operators want to be. Um, but, you know, we have to look to the applications that can help bring us over uh, the goal line, so to speak. And virtualized CPE is certainly a top use case. We've really spent the last, you know, three, four years testing virtualized CPE in a lab. It's really now time to focus on the operational aspects of it. And, you know, to do that, you know, operators need that end-to-end -end service layer orchestration, right? Not just the resource orchestration, but total control of the service lifecycle across physical and virtual domains, and a modernized BSS in particular. You know, automating the rating and charging engine, uh, making it real time, uh, scaling up the partner management functionality, uh, and, and there's so much more there that also needs to be done. Um, you know, we at NEC Netcracker, with Netcracker's heritage and the BSS and OSS and NEC's heritage in the network and the IT uh, infrastructure, you know, we're bringing together what we believe are the right combination of assets to help our customers move into an operational framework. And you know, we're working with a number of partners, Red Hat is one, we're working with a number of partners to make OpenStack carrier grade. Uh, in order for NFV to be able to scale, in order for us to operationalize at scale, you know, we need uh, carrier grade attributes and carrier grade enhancements to OpenStack and you know we have a long history of working in that area you know we're an early pioneer in developing for example dpdk alongside intel and getting that into um you know our integration with openstack with red hat for example um, and we've made significant strides in enhancing openstack for the carrier environment and we'll continue to do that we're continuing to uh, we're continuing our commitment there uh, so I'll leave you with that, and you know, if any of you have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, thank you so much for coming, I appreciate it.